Good morning. I am First Lieutenant Nyla Proctor, and I will be your mistress of ceremonies for today's change of command and change of responsibility. On behalf of the presiding officer, Lieutenant General Christopher O. Mohan, Deputy Commanding General and Acting Commander, United States Army Material Command, we would like to welcome you to the United States Army Contracting Command, Change of Command, and Change of Responsibility Ceremony. This morning, we will honor Brigadier General Christine A. Beeler as she relinquishes command to Major General Douglas S. Lowry. Command Sergeant Major Julie A. Serrano will relinquish responsibility to Command Sergeant Major Rachel Y. Harris. Today's ceremony is a reflection of tradition since the birth of our Army in 1775. The, pre the presence of the quintet represents the significant role martial music has played throughout history by instilling pride, loyalty, and courage in armies before battle. In 2008, Army Contracting Command was established to meet the Army's increased need of contracting support for the beginning wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. On March 13, 2008, ACC was provisionally activated at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, becoming the newest major subordinate command of the United States Army Material Command. Six months later, on October 1, 2008, the United States Army Contracting Command became fully activated with two subordinate commands. The Expeditionary Contracting Command, co-located with ACC at Fort Belvoir, and the Mission and Installation Contracting Command, headquartered at Joint Base San Antonio, Texas. Today, ACC is headquartered here at Redstone Arsenal and continues to evolve, seeking to improve professional contracting support for the Army, America's allies, and those in need of humanitarian support. At this time, we would like to extend a special welcome to our distinguished visitors here with us today. Mrs. Cindy Mohan, spouse of Lieutenant General Christopher Mohan, United States Army Material Command. Command Sergeant Major Jimmy J. Sellers, Command Sergeant Major, Army Material Command, and Mrs. Shawnette Sellers. Lieutenant General Maria Gervais, Deputy Commanding General and Chief of Staff, Army Training and Doctrine Command. Lieutenant General Sean Ganey, Commanding General, Army Space and Missile Defense Command, and Joint Functional Component Command for Integrated Missile Defense. Ms. Kristen McBride, Civilian and aide to the Secretary of the Army for Northern Alabama. Ms. Marion Wicker, Executive Deputy to the Army Material Command, Commanding General. Dr. Joe Fitzgerald, Civilian Aide to the Secretary of the Army for Northern Alabama, Emeritus. Ms. Leisha Adams, Former Executive Deputy to the Army Material Command, Commanding General. Mr. Brian Neuer, Senior Military Advisor for Senator Tommy Tuberville, Ms. Shan McMillan, Field Representative for Senator Katie Britt, Mr. Dylan Smith, District Director for Congressman Dale Strong, Mrs. Connie Fox Sampson, wife of the late Brian Sampson, former Deputy to the Army Contracting Command, Commanding General. We also extend a warm welcome to Brigadier General Beeler's husband, Dr. Dennis Beeler. Brigadier General Beeler's closest friend, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Anala Arkari. Major General Lowry's wife, Dina Lowry, and their children, Ethan, Evan, and Elliot. Command Sergeant Major Serrano's husband, Ralph Serrano, and their children, Elena and Jaime. And Command Sergeant Major Harris's father, Mr. Michael Harris. And to all other general officers, senior executive service members, industry partners, service members, active and retired, Army civilians, Redstone Arsenal community friends, and members of the Army Contracting Command, welcome and good morning. Thank you for taking time out of your day to attend today's ceremony. The reviewing officer for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Christopher Mohan, Deputy Commanding General and Acting Commanding General, Army Material Command. Music for today's ceremony is provided by the 313th Army Band, 81st Readiness Division, Army Reserve, led by Staff Sergeant Aaron Saxon. On the field today, arrayed to, the, to your front, are the colors from each of our major subordinate commands. They are, from left to right, the 408th Contracting Support Brigade, 
headquartered in Camp Arv John, Kuwait, commanded by Colonel Barry Williams and Command Sergeant Major Matthew Gerard. The 409th Contracting Support Brigade, headquartered in Simbach, Germany, commanded by Colonel Jarrett Moffitt and Command Sergeant Major Jalila Wahid. The 410th Contracting Support Brigade, headquartered in Joint Base San Antonio, Texas, commanded by Colonel Kenneth Boltice and Command Sergeant Major Darlene Riley. The 411th Contracting Support Brigade, headquartered in Camp Humphreys, Korea, commanded by Colonel Anthony Rogers and Command Sergeant Major Nakia Harris. And at the center of the field, we have the Army Contracting Command Color Guard under the direction of the Commander of Troops, Sergeant Major Angela Beckford. The United States Army Mission and Installation Contracting Command, headquartered in Joint Base San Antonio, Texas, commanded by Colonel Freddie Adams and Command Sergeant Major Jason Guzman. The 413th Contracting Support Brigade, headquartered in Fort Shafter, Hawaii, commanded by Colonel Jason Miles and Command Sergeant Major Julio Calzada. The 414th Contracting Support Brigade, headquartered in Vicenza, Italy, commanded by Colonel Isaac Torres and Command Sergeant Major Nadia Varabiova Santiago. The 418th Contracting Support Brigade, headquartered in Fort Cavazos, Texas, commanded by Colonel Jesse Griffith and Command Sergeant Major Joshua Thompson. The 419th Contracting Support Brigade, headquartered in Fort Liberty, North Carolina, commanded by Colonel Douglas Ralph and Command Sergeant Major Nicholas Tillette. Not represented on the field, but a vital part of Army Contracting Command are the ACC Contracting Centers, which include ACC Aberdeen Proving Ground, directed by Ms. Danielle Moyer, ACC Detroit Arsenal, directed by Acting Director Colonel John Cooper, ACC New Jersey, directed by Mr. Thomas Doherty, ACC Orlando, directed by Acting Director Dr. Vern Dr. Vernon Myers, ACC Redstone Arsenal, directed by Mr. Joseph Genta, and ACC Rock Island Arsenal, directed by Ms. Linda Armour. The earliest use of ruffles and flourishes can be traced to the time of England's Lord Marlborough, who used kettle drums to announce his arrival. English colonists brought the tradition to the colonies during the French and Indian War when two ruffles and present arms were given for Virginia's royal governor. In 1776, the Continental Army authorized a fife and drum unit to give ruffles equal to the number of stars a general possesses. Today's official party consists of Lieutenant General Christopher Mohan, Brigadier General Christine Beeler, Command Sergeant Major Julie Serrano, Major General Douglas Lowry, and Command Sergeant Major Rachel Harris. For today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Mohan is deferring honors to the outgoing commander, Brigadier General Beeler. One ruffle will be played in honor of Brigadier General Beeler. At this time, please stand for the arrival of the official party, the rendering of honors, the playing of the national anthem, and the invocation given by Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Mitchell.
Join me as we pray. Almighty God, we gather today to witness the passing of the colors, a time-honored tradition that marks the change in leadership of the U.S. Army Contracting Command. We ask for your presence and guidance as we honor the service of Brigadier General Christine Biller and Command Sergeant Major Julie Serrano, and welcome Major General Douglas Rout Lowry and Command Sergeant Major Rachel Harris. Lord, we thank you for the leadership of Brigadier General Beeler and Command Sergeant Major Serrano. We're grateful for their dedication, wisdom, and unwavering commitment to the mission of the command. We extend our gratitude to their families and their unwavering support throughout their tenure. Bless them as they embark on this next chapter of their journey, and may your favor continue to shine upon them and their families. And as we welcome Major General Lowry and Command Sergeant Major Harris, we ask for your blessings upon them and their families as they join the ACC family. Grant them wisdom as they assume command, courage to face the challenges and strength, to lead with integrity, and may their decisions be guided by your divine wisdom and their actions reflect your love for all. We pray for the continued success of U.S. Army Contracting Command as the Army's principal buying agent within Army Material Command. May this command always remain vigilant in its mission to equip our soldiers with the tools they need to fight and win our nation's wars. We also pray for the men and women who serve under this command. Give them the skills and knowledge to excel in their duties and their dedication to always serve and, uh, with honor. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, Captain Christopher Lee will present Brigadier General Beeler's husband, Dennis, with a small token of appreciation, symbolizing the devotion and loyal support he provided to Brigadier General Beeler and Army Contracting Command soldiers, civilians, and their families. Sergeant First Class William Stevens will now present Command Sergeant Major Serrano's husband, Ralph, with a small token of appreciation, symbolizing the devotion and loyal support he provided to Command Sergeant Major Serrano and Army Contracting Command soldiers, civilians, and their families. A token of appreciation will also be presented to Command Sergeant Major Serrano's children, Elena and Jaime, thanking them for all their support and devotion to their mother. At this time, Captain Peter Tenji will present Major General Lowry's wife, Dina, a bouquet of yellow rosebuds. The yellow symbolizes a bright future and the rosebuds that will bloom symbolizes the friendship that will blossom and flourish with time and interaction with the soldiers, civilians, and families of Army Contracting Command. Gifts are also presented to Major General Lowry's children, Ethan, Evan, who graduated high school last month, and Elliot, the coolest kid on the planet, welcoming them to the Redstone Arsenal community. And now, Staff Sergeant Hunter Chapman is presenting Command Sergeant Major Harris's father, Michael Harris, with a small token of appreciation for his continued support of his daughter, as he, she is welcome to Army Contracting Command and the Redstone Arsenal community. Since the earliest chronicles of military history, Leaders have used a banner or some visible symbol to identify themselves and to serve as a rallying point to their members. Today, the colors serve as such a symbol to all United States Army units. The proud heritage of our armed forces began more than 200 years ago when citizens joined together in a common cause, the quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The change of command is a time to honor part of that tradition by formally restating the authority of command. The change of command is a transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability from one commander to another. The change of command is a simple yet traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. Key to the ceremony is the passing of the unit's colors. 
These colors represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers and civilians. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his or her responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there also are the colors. The custodian of the colors is the command sergeant major, the senior enlisted soldier in the unit and principal advisor to the commander. Ladies and gentlemen, the official party will now take their positions for the passing of the colors. The passing of the colors symbolizes the transfer of command authority from the outgoing commander to the incoming commander. The passing of the colors from the outgoing command sergeant major to the incoming command sergeant major symbolizes the transfer of responsibility. The passing of the unit's colors demonstrates to the soldiers and civilians of the unit that the outgoing leaders have passed the mantle of leadership. And with this also passes the loyalty of the soldiers and civilians to the new leaders. The ceremony begins as Command Sergeant Major Serrano passes the colors to Brigadier General Beeler for the last time. Brigadier General Beeler will then pass the colors to General Mohan, thereby relinquishing her responsibilities and authority. General Mohan then passes the colors to Major General Lowry, charging the new commander with the same responsibilities and authority. By authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5 alpha, the undersigned assumes command of Army Contracting Command, effective 14 June 2024, signed Major General Douglas S. Lowry. As Major General Lowry's first official act as commander of Army Contracting Command, he will pass the colors to Command Sergeant Major Harris, signifying that the care and trust of the unit's colors have been passed back to the soldiers where it will take its proper place as a symbol of the unit's spirit and direction. Ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Commanding General and Acting Commanding General of Army Material Command, Lieutenant General Christopher O. Mohan. Okay, good morning, everybody. And I have to tell you, it is truly a great day to be here in the Tennessee Valley. And to celebrate such a wonderful ceremony on the Army's birthday is, uh, is absolutely uh, a special thing and is fantastic. I don't know if you planned it this way there. I mean, just, just saying, right? Hey, but today's not only Army's birthday, but it seems like it's also the first official rival of summer. Um, and so, hey, I got that Alabama haze when I came out to run this morning, and you know it's going to be a hot one. And so for the troops on the field, I want you to listen very carefully. Unseat colors. There you go. Everybody, you can do it. There you go. Rest. And while you're clapping, let's go ahead and clap for the troops on the field, the 313th Army Band, the chaplain, and all the teams that, uh, that set this up. I want to personally say thank you for doing this. Look, it's incredibly important that we do these ceremonies. I'll talk about it in a few minutes, but this is part of the fabric of our Army. 
There's, I know that the narrator went uh, through all the, uh, the, the official folks that are here. Um, I want to say thank you all for coming, but I would be remiss if I didn't call out just a few of them. First of all, my battle buddy, Command Sergeant Major Sellers and his wife, Seanette, my neighbor, my battle buddy, I learn from you just like I learn from Sergeant Majors every day. So thank you for being here. Our two CASAs, so we get a CASA, Chris McBride, and we also get a CASA Emeritus. Um, so thanks for being here, Chris and Joe. And then we've got Miss Adams, no stranger to this building, um, as our former EDCG, sitting two steps down from our current EDCG, Miss Wicker. Um, it is great to see all the teammates that we have here. And we've got representatives from our, our senators, um, our local delegation, and then a whole bunch of other people. And if I get you, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. But um, it's incredibly important that we're all here together to talk about great leaders, but also great units. And that's what you on the field represent. These also are days where we have to do transitions, right? And as we like to say in the Mohan family, it's not um, a transition and we'll see you later, but it's a transition and we will definitely see you later. And so, uh, so we're going to honor a command team that is, uh, that is retiring. One's retiring, the other one's moving to sunny Florida, or maybe not so sunny right now. But um, these ceremonies that we're going to do, they bind us together. They make our profession distinct and separate from other professions in the world. They're very simple, troops on the field, colors, some music from the band, um, and then a bunch of different commands. But in the essence of it, it's a simple recognition of what we do as an army. And we do ceremonies like this no matter where you are or where we are, overseas, in CONUS, deployed in combat. I've seen ceremonies pulled off on the end of a, on the end of a ramp of a C-17 in combat. As we do these transitions, we take the time to take a step back and, and recognize leaders and recognize transitions because that's what we do in the Army. And I like to say the Army keeps rolling along. And what keeps us rolling along is this, this that you see in front of us. I know General Beeler is going to talk about um, some of these great leaders in a few minutes, but I would be remiss if I did not um, call out just a couple of, now look, I've done a ton of change of commands, but, uh, but normally we don't do a change of command and a change of responsibility together, but the timing was right for this one, and it's a perfect day to do this. And I want to call out not only the command sergeant majors that just swapped those colors, but also just the command sergeant majors uh, as, a general, as a general rule. So as we're standing back there, look, I have very little uh, um, marching prep for this, um, and Sergeant Major, uh, Command Sergeant Major Serrano was kind of taking me through it, and I said, hey, look, you're going to be giving me the commands, right? And she said, yes, sir, and I said, okay, I'm good, right? And, and that is a normal reaction for people like me because we rely not only on our Command Sergeant Majors but all of our non-commissioned officers uh, to do this for us on a daily basis. Our non-commissioned officer corps is the envy of every other army in the world and it what makes us strong as an army. And that professional non-commissioned officers corps, we refer to it as the backbone. And I will tell you, when you get it right and the Army gets it right, when you have a commander and a command sergeant major who move as one element, who think as one element, it is powerful. It is absolutely powerful. And that's what you see represented today. As we, as we honor not only a commander but also a command sergeant major, partners, battle buddies, and friends, because you spend a lot of time together, and you get to know things that you maybe didn't want to know about your, 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 <laughs> your teammate. Um, but it's incredibly important for our Army. And I will tell you, Command Sergeant Major Serrano, your reputation as a soldier, a trainer, and a leader is known across the Army. And you have perfectly complimented your commander. And the results are, a unit that moves forward is one. A unit that accomplishes every task. And, uh, and you epitomize the NCO creed, which says no one is more professional than I. And so I want to thank you personally for what you've done. I want to thank Ralph, Elena, and Jaime for all that you've done to support your mom. 
as, uh, as, as you have been that backbone for the backbone. And so let's please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Command Sergeant Major Harris, your reputation for professionalism and commitment to Army standards is also well known. And, uh, and I want to formally welcome you and uh, say hello to your, uh, to your dad, Michael, who's from, uh, from Seattle, Washington. You talk about a sticker shock when he, when he showed up here. Uh, 95 degrees today, brother, so batten down the hatches. And so I am confident uh, that, you're, that you are the right non-commissioned officer to carry the torch forward and into the future of Army Contracting Command. So, uh, so welcome. So please give me a round, uh, give uh, Command Sergeant Major Harris a round of applause. <laughs> All right, now I want to personally recognize just a few of, of Chris's and Doug's family. Uh, Chris's doctor, or husband, Dr. Dennis Beeler, they've been married for 11 years, and as many of you know, uh, he's also a retired Chief Warrant Officer. And his final assignment was a senior Chief Warrant Officer handling the technical and logistics aspects of the Japanese Patriot Missile Operations in Case here on the Arsenal. Uh, Dennis also is, uh, is well ingrained in the Ardmore community, and I know you got some of your Ardmore peeps over there, Dennis. Where are your Ardmore peeps? There you go, yep. He serves on the Planning Commission for the city. Um, he's also part of the Ardmore, Alabama, Tennessee Veterans Group and the Greater Ardmore Chamber of Commerce. And he's also a gentleman farmer. Um, with, uh, I guess you're raising hay and soon to be chickens, uh, chickens at some point. I can relate, totally. But here's the other thing. Part of, uh, of what we do as an Army, we give back. And he's established an annual $5,000 Beeler Family Memorial Scholarship at Armour High School. And I think that is worthy of applause. <laughs> so Lieutenant Colonel retired. A na okay, all right, North Carolina Public Education, just, it is what it is, right? Anela, there we go, Arkari, from Oahu, Hawaii. Now, if you talk to her, she doesn't sound like she's from Oahu because she lives in Brooklyn right now. She sounds like she lives in Brooklyn. They've been friends since they were in the eighth grade together. Just another great testament to our Army and the fabric that binds us together as we see each other uh, not goodbye, but see you later. Now, let's move on to the, uh, to the Lowry family. Doug's wife of 27 years, Dina, she's a physical therapist by trade and an Army spouse, and it sounds like you are a professional club soccer booster mom because it sounds like a lot of things revolve around soccer. Now, they've got three sons, and they're all soccer players, no surprise. Ethan... Evan and Elliot, and they are all in, in, uh, ingrained in the local community because they've stayed while Doug was down in uh, San Antonio. And so, Doug, I know you're tickled to death to be reunited with your family. I hope they're tickled to death that you're back. Um, just bring the checkbook, and, uh, and it is great to have you guys back and have you as part of the community once again. The late General Ray Odenero always said that the strength of our soldiers are their families, and that's certainly true here. So one last final round of applause for all the great Army families that are in attendance today. <laughs> now a little bit about what Chris did in command and what you did in command. First and foremost, she led the command in its embrace of an enterprise mindset, one command, one team, delivering the power of Army contracting at the point of the need and at the X and at the X is where ACC lives. With this enterprise in place and operationalized, Chris and this team accomplished a great deal in the last three years. I can't mention everything, but here's some of the highlights. Chris oversaw the yearly planning, execution, and administration of over 140,000 contract actions with annual average obligations exceeding $96 billion. That's more than, than probably half the countries in the world, uh, their GDP. AC ACC closed out contracts for the COVID-19 response and operation warp speed, a massive task that spanned the depth and breadth of the entire federal government. This command helped our government procure more than $90 billion worth of vaccines, therapeutics, and essential medical supplies during the pandemic, when the nation needed an organization to manage the seemingly unmanageable. They called on ACC, and ACC delivered. 
ACC also closed out all the contracts in our, from our 20 plus year uh, presence in Afghanistan. ACC was, speaking of Afghanistan, ACC was, was a critical part of Operation Allies Welcome, the effort to evacuate and resettle our Afghan partners who worked alongside our military during the war. And I will tell you, I was then the commander of Army Con uh, Sustainment Command, and we were peas and carrots because we can't do it without you, and we didn't do it without you. More than 60,000 of our former allies arrived, and ACC fil facilitated contracts for transportation, translation, housing, life support services. Imagine this, a plane load of, of Afghanis do not speak any English, arrive. They've never been to a doctor. They've, they've never had three meals a day, and all their worldly possessions are in a grocery bag. We took them, we handled them, we vaccinated them, we looked after them, and we're resettling them now. And you guys had a major, major role in that, and as you do, to continue to do today. And after Russia invaded Ukraine, ACC played a pivotal role in our response by facilitating contracts for the rapid delivery of more than $19 billion in ammunition, weapon systems, and supplies. The men and women of ACC know the score. They know that everyone sees the Army doing what everyone sees the Army doing cannot and will not happen without their support and your actions. First, on the front end, on the leading edge, of whatever conflict or operation we're accomplishing. Brigadier General Beeler, Chris, over the last three years, you have made it happen. I have watched you lead with professionalism, courage, and grace. And I want to thank, personally say, uh, from me, from Cindy, from our families, and from, from the entire command, thank you for your service. And I will tell you, we look forward to all the very best for you and Dennis as you head to your next assignment as the program executive officers officer for simulation training and instrumentation in sunny Orlando, Florida. I'm not sure how that happens, but there you go. Disney World. All right, so round of applause for the Beelers. Okay, now as you've just heard, overseeing our Army's contracting capability has never been as complex and as critical as it is today. The commanding general of this organization must not only be a strong and talented leader, but they all also must be an expert in this field because the opportunity for mistakes are many. And I've probably made many. Thankfully, the new commanding general hardly needs an introduction to this command. Most of you have already worked with them in some level here in ACC. Doug Lowry is the absolute right general officer and leader and human being for this job. He's been the XO and the G3 at ACC, um, along with commanding one of his brigades and one of, his, and one of its battalions. And as a testament to his leadership, we've got Command Sergeant Major retired Rocky Carr and Master Sergeant retired Roxy Carr, who are teammates of us in the 21st TSC, who are also here to watch this, this transition. That's a testament to your leadership and your care for soldiers and the fact that, that people care about you. So Doug comes back to Redstone Arsenal after serving as the CG of the Mission in Installation Contracting Command at Joint Base San Antonio. He did a phenomenal job, and he added one more reason to the long wrist list of why he's the right person for this assignment. Doug, it's now my honor to officially welcome you back as the new Commanding General of Army Contracting Command. I look forward to serving with you again. Please join me to welcome the Lowry family home. Finally, to the men and women of ACC, we couldn't be prouder for what you do and the daily impacts you have on our Army, America's Army. You've been in good hand, hands with, with Brigadier General Beeler, and you remain in good hands with Major General Lowry, and I know that you will continue to do the great things that we're going to ask for you for our Army and our nation. Thank you very much. This will defend, be all you can be. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing commander of Army Contracting Command, Brigadier General Christine A. Beeler. All right, all right, how's everybody doing out there? Woo! Come on, a little noise, a little energy, a little energy. All right, so our 
Sheriff General Mohan, Cindy Mohan, uh, can't thank you guys enough for all the support that you've given me and Dennis over the years. We've had a lot of opportunity to serve together, sir. Uh, Command Sergeant Major Sellers and Mrs. Sellers, phenomenal battle buddies for my Command Sergeant Major and my whole organization. Uh, General Gervais and uh, General Ganey, if you're here, I really appreciate your attendance. Uh, to our CASAs, I mean, phenomenal group of folks. Uh, so, you know, Chris McBride and, and uh, Joe, Dr. Joe Fitzgerald, thank you all so very, very much. Ms. Wicker, my current EDCG, and, and really she takes care of all of our civilians across Army Materiel Command and in ACC, and we couldn't do it without you, ma'am. So thank you so, so very much. Ms. Adams, former battle buddy, used to take good care of us as well. You know, when you think about all the folks in uh, ACC, of the 6,000 of them, we're about 25% military, 75% civilian. And so it takes that whole village and, and those great leaders over there help us every day. Uh, to all of the representatives from our elected officials, both at the state level, the national level, and here at the local level, thank you all so very much for being here. Mrs. Fox Sampson, thank you so very much. Your husband um, is a pivotal, uh, played a pivotal role in my life and my career, and I am so absolutely grateful for that. Uh, we miss him every day. To the members of Army Contracting Command, the Huntsville community leaders, friends, family, I am honored by your presence and support. Thanks to the bands, thanks to the chaplain, thanks to all the tech people out there who are trying to take pictures and, and make everything happen. Um, you may not know this, uh, but this is my sixth assignment to the state of Alabama. Yes, sixth. Fifth to the arsenal. So the poor folks at Jacksonville, uh, in Jacksonville, at Jacksonville State got to, got to play, we got to hang out for two years when I was down there teaching Army ROTC, great university, loved it every minute. Um, but what I will admit is when I was a second lieutenant and I moved, I came here for four weeks, sir, four weeks in 92. I don't know if you remember, but in 92, the only mall was a white mall out off of the parkway, and that was it. All of a sudden, it was cotton field in every other direction. And, and I moved to Germany, and I was playing pinochle with a bunch of Patriot guys, because that's what Patriot NCOs do at lunchtime is they play pinochle. And I told them, I said, I said, you know, Sergeant First Class Blanchard and Master Sergeant Pickle, there is no way I am ever coming back, ever coming back to Huntsville, Alabama. Let's just say God and the Army had, uh, you know, they had the better idea, and, and I could not be more happy to be in this community. This is really where I have found uh, a home uh, amongst all of you. Dennis, I'm eternally grateful for your love, your support, uh, which allows me to fully commit my energy and attention to the men and women of Army Contracting Command and, and the Army, really, every day. Thank you for always being by my side, sweetheart. I'm also really, really, really lucky to have my best friend of 40 years, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Anala Akari, here as well to share in these such, uh, celebrations. She has been my staunchest supporter, sounding board, and older sister by four months that everybody needs, particularly me. Everybody needs an older sister, and I'm absolutely grateful. So to her and her entire family, they've been a part of my village. I know my mother's looking down on this celebration and that my father, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, and cousins are watching, are watching virtually. Uh, they are all my strength. It's been an honor to work uh, as a member of Army Materiel Command, uh, really the arsenal for the brave, sir. It's been a phenomenal, great uh, opportunity, and I couldn't have asked for a better wing woman. My number one wing woman over there, Command Sergeant Major Julie Serrano. Uh, 30 years, 30 years is a lot, but you're not really leaving the fold. You're just, you're just going down the street uh, to continue to support our Army, and that's awesome. You've served with honor, wisdom, patriotism. Uh, you have led the non-commissioned officer corps with passion and distinction. And you have, I thank you for twice, twice. I, I obviously didn't do a good job on the first time, and I had to, I had to recycle. Um, but thank you for being my command sergeant major twice. I, I couldn't have asked for, for any better support. And to Ralph, 
uh, Elena and Jaime, you guys are my family, and I thank you oh so very much for being part of the team. To the outstanding men and women of the incredible Army Contracting Command, Command Sergeant Major Beckford, you and the soldiers out there look absolutely phenomenal. I could not have, have asked for a better commander of troops. Outstanding work. Without a doubt, serving with the 6,000 soldiers, Army civilians, foreign local national employees of Army Contracting Command has been the most rewarding assignment in my career. I am so proud of what we've accomplished together. Along our journey, though, we lost a, we lost a giant in the community. Brian, Brian Sampson was the deputy to the commander, a great friend, a mentor to me, and many, many others. Uh, I must absolutely recognize him and the Sampson family for allowing Brian to serve as brilliantly as he did. We honor his legacy, and when in doubt, I always, you know, a lot of people say, what would Jesus do? In, in my mind, when it comes to the contracting community, it's WWBD. What would Brian do in this time? And so uh, I know he's watching and is very proud of everybody in this organization. You know, as a command team, our top priority was always taking care of our people first. That didn't mean, you know, you know, nice, everybody got a four-day holiday or 59 minutes off, although we were, we were fairly generous with those as well. But it really meant tough, realistic training, candid feedback, and ample opportunity for everybody in the organization to excel. We reinforced our commitment to fostering a diverse and professional workforce, enable this agile, innovative contracting enterprise to drive transformation worldwide. Our success stems from our diversity of thought, experience, and when combined, initiative, creative thinking, innovation, agility, it improves our effectiveness. Every ACC member of every career field, because it's not just contracting folks in this organization, every MOS, every grade, every rank has, been, has a pivotal role in ensuring every contracting action is executed on time and accurately. So that our soldiers, our army, and our nation have what they need and that we maximize the value of every dollar so that we can get them more. Over the last three years, you have completed more than 400,000 contracting actions valued at $290 billion over the last three years. General Mohan, he went over all of the great things that you did. I, I am not going to reread all of that because you know what you did and I am thankful for each and every uh, part of that. While we were doing all of those things though, we've come up with great new capabilities. We've supported digital modernization, unified operations, and through data dominance, we will continue to be the most agile acquisition workforce on the battlefield. You've done 100 exercises, missions, and deployments around the world. Our Army thanks you every time. When we went into Haiti, the first boots on the ground were contracting professionals out of the 410th. Ma uh, Major General Lowry, sir, Command Sergeant Major Harris, Dan Gallagher, you guys are the right command team to lead ACC forward. And as we embark on the most significant transformation in the, over the next uh, four years, I am certain you will have the ability to give the combatant commanders everything they need across the full spectrum of con conflict from battlefield to production line. It's been my great honor and distinct pleasure to serve alongside you and the men and women of Army Contracting Command will continue to deliver the power of contracting to win every day, anywhere, every time. God bless America. Happy 249th Army birthday to all the soldiers past and present. Contracting for victory. This will defend and be all you can be. Thank you, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing Command Sergeant Major of the Army Contracting Command, Command Sergeant Major Julie A. Serrano. Good morning, <clears throat> Lieutenant Mohan, Ms. Ms. Mohan, Command Sergeant Major Seller, Ms. Seller. Distinguished guests and fellow soldiers, families and friends, thank you for being here today. And I'm gonna do this short because I know we got the soldiers out in the field. We need to get them out of the field. So I appreciate everybody. It is with a great pride and sense of humble gratitude that I stand before you on this significant occasion. 
As I prepare to the pass on the responsibility to the Army Contracting Command, Command Sergeant Major position, I reflect on the incredible journey this has been and the honor it has been to serve alongside such a dedicated and encouraged individuals. To Brigade General Beeler, Brigadier General Beeler, thank you for your unwavering, unwavering in my battle buddy, support, and for the trust you have placed in me. Your leadership and vision have been guided, guiding lights, steering the Army contracting through both challenges and triumph. It has, been, it has been a privilege to work with you in shaping our mission and achieving our objectivity. My, to my fellow non-commissioned officer, you are the backbone of the Army Contracting Command. Your professionalism, resiliency, and commitment to being nothing but short of inspiring. Each of you has contributed to the strength and readiness of our team, and I am proud of what we have accomplished together. Your dedication to duty and spirit of camaraderie you embody will always be remembered. To my family, your love, your love and support has been my anchor. The sacrifice you have made, the long hours, and countless deployments you have endured, and your steadfast encouragement has been vital to my success. Thank you for being foundation and my motivation. As I stand here, I pass the reins to Command Sergeant Major Harris. I have complete confidence on her ability to lead and inspire this great organization. Command Sergeant Major Harris, you bring a wealth of experience and deep commitment to our soldiers and mission. I know you will be continuing to drive this, um, this unit forward with excellence and dedication. In closing, I want to thank each and every one of you for the honor of serving as a Command Sergeant Major. The experience we share and the bond we form will stay with me forever. While my role here is ending, my commitment to our Army and our nation remains as strong as ever. Continue to strive for excellence, support one another, and uphold the values that make us our, the, our Army greatest and the, the greatest Army of the world. Thank you and may God bless you all. Contracting for victory, Army strong, be all you can be. This will defend Gold Eagle 7 signing out. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major Serrano. Ladies and gentlemen, the Command Sergeant Major of Army Contracting Command, Command Sergeant Major Rachel Y. Harris. All right, team, good morning. For the sake and care of the soldiers, I'm gonna keep this super short. Uh, first, giving honors to our distinguished guests, Lieutenant General Mohan, thank you, sir, for your kind words. General Lowry, Major General Lowry, sir, thank you. I'm looking forward to being your battle buddy. Uh, Brigadier General Beeler, Command Sergeant Major, thank you for laying the path for both General Lowry and myself so that we can follow in your footsteps. Command Sergeant Major Sellers and Mrs. Sellers, thank you for being here. Command Sergeant Major, I look forward to partnering with you as we take our NCO Corps to the new heights that it deserves. Uh, for distinguished guests, family members and friends. Thank you all for being here on today. It is truly an honor to serve amongst you all. And happy birthday, United States Army. Whoa. All right, Major General Lowry, sir, this is for you. I am honored to serve as your advisor on all enlisted matters. I will enforce policies, standards, conduct of organizations at Echelon, and as well as be your battle buddy and have your six. A portion of the NCO creed states, and I reaffirm in hundreds of people today, no one is more professional than I. I am a non-commissioned officer, a leader of soldiers. As a non-commissioned officer, I realize that I am a member of a time honor corps, which is known as the backbone of the Army. Sir, the NCOs run the Army. Cool. <laughs> and lastly, sir, I am committed to helping you create a positive culture at the strategic level that is about providing the needed resources, 
for our downtrace units and ensure your directives, your policies, procedures, mission, vision, and intent are met to support large-scale combat operations while serving in multi-domain operational environments postured for the 2030 and beyond. Golden Eagle 7 signing on. Happy birthday, United States Army. Be all you can be, and this will defend. Hoa. Thank you, Command Star Major Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander of Army Contracting Command, Major General Douglas S. Lowry. Yeah. You better get your photos, because this is gonna be really quick. Uh, what you saw out there, and I agree, the NCOs run the Army, right? You saw NCOs come up and help a fellow soldier. So how about a round of applause for them real quick. I am gonna skip every single protocol that I've ever been taught and go straight to the speech. Uh, first, my family, I love you. Thank you for letting me be a soldier. To the guys out there on the field, to all the ACC, I have one word for you, win. Win every day. Bring it every day. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's ceremony. Sergeant so Major Beckford, I uh, need you to go ahead and see the colors. As soon as you do that, sound attention and play the Army song. Pull up. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing and singing of the Army song. The words are printed on the back of your program. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. You are cordially invited to bid farewell to Brigadier General Beeler, Sergeant Major Serrano, and their families in the Tuttle Room through the double glass doors to my rear. Please join us across the street back at Army Contracting Command Headquarters for a reception to welcome Major General Lowry and Command Sergeant Major Harris. Thank you for attending today's ceremony. Contracting for victory, this will defend, be all you can be.